Welcome to Medical Confessions. I'm Jen. I'm April. And I'm Scott. Today we're going to be talking about what those white chunks are in the back of your mouth. so gross. <laughs> it is gross. Have you ever had them? No, not that I know of. You? Not not me, but Parker has, my son. So. Oh, wow. Have you seen them? Yeah, he, he used to cough them up all the time. He'd be like, Mom, these stink. And we asked, and we never could really get a definitive answer about them, but then they just went away. And, and so it comes from your tonsils, and it's not... I don't know. It just seems like that would freak me out. Something... Did you? Did they you, stunk horrible. So... <laughs> I think I would just assume it's like food stuck in your throat or something. Well, and they are. They are uh, basically all they are is uh, calcified globs of uh, de uh, debris, food debris, bacteria, mucus that uh, calcify in the crypts I of your tonsils. Stink. That's so gross. <laughs> they they are they are the number one cause of bad breath. Mm -hmm. Halitosis. Yeah is those things and a lot of people have them and don't even know it they're so small you can't see them and you have to see them on like x-ray or something like that but if they get super huge you can see them you cough them up mm. and they're gross and so what's super huge well super huge is not that much it's a couple of centimeters maybe at the biggest no i mean not even that big sometimes they're yeah. not huge but they but you can see them and they sometimes you can feel them they're like a they make it like a little sore throat or like it feels like you have something in the back of your throat yeah I don't know. I've never had one, so I don't know what it is. But feels you've like. seen them. You've yeah. seen them. And they're like. They're just white or opaque little chunks of. Goo. Yeah, goo. He, like, would squish it in between his fingers. Like a tick. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> and then that's when we could really smell him, is when he'd, like. We, I was actually talking to him. I was like, hey, do you still have those things? Like, you haven't mentioned them. He's like, no. I was like, and I told him we were going to talk about this. He's like, oh, well, you know that the people that do have them, like, they know they smell because they squish them between their fingers. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I read somewhere that that's actually when the breath gets really bad is when they get punctured or they open up on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they do. They say. Well, and, and it makes sense he doesn't get them anymore. The most common uh, age to get them is between the ages of 4 and 10 when your tonsils, uh, specifically your palatine tonsils on the sides and back of your throat, are, are larger in that during that time frame and they're the most active. And then when you age, those tonsils kind of shrink a little bit. Yeah. So it's less common the older you get. But mm -hmm. is it a age and they shrink or is it a hygiene issue? So here's my theory. Little kids aren't as good about brushing their teeth, right? Good parents get in there and brush them for them. But mm -hmm. as they start to get a little older, and I made this mistake with my own kids, when they get to be about like five, six-ish or so, you start letting them brush their teeth more. And that's when all my kids got cavities because I thought they were doing mm -hmm. a good job. It looked like they were doing a good job, but they weren't. So are they not doing as good of a job with oral hygiene? Therefore, they are more likely to get them? Well, it's probably the more common sense uh, factors of everything involved. The tonsils are a little bit bigger, so the tonsil crypts um, are a little bit bigger. Plus, uh, I mean, if you want to reduce your chance of getting them, good hygiene, because one of the things, portions of what they are, is food debris. Um, uh, control the na post nasal drip, so kids probably aren't as good at, like, you know, blowing their nose and things like that. Um, uh, controlling uh, or scraping off your tongue to get all the, you know, just tongue debris off of there. Uh, so kids probably aren't as good, so it's probably a combination of both things, I would imagine. I don't think I've read a study that says this is the number one cause, but it makes sense that if that's what it is, control that and you'll get better at it, and well, you, or you won't get them. And then my question is, because these stones lead to halitosis, I know lots of people that I, it's beyond bad breath, like it's, they have chronic hal halitosis. Yeah. So my question is, are they, do they have these tonsil stones and they just don't see them? Like well, even though they're adults maybe through these CT scans or what, however else you see them. Well, no, it's very maybe. true. Most of them you can't see because they are so small. They are in the crypts of your tonsils, so mm -hmm. they're they're in the, the, I guess, for lack of a better term, caves of your tonsils. Um, and so, But they're so small you can't see them, and you don't know that they're there. It's only when they get super huge that you notice them. Hmm. And most of them are small. So let's back up even further. So they're basic, right? These, yeah. They're basic and the hygiene's it's basic. What are tonsils? Like why does this happen and what are our tonsils? Why do we even have tonsils? Well yeah, like what's the deal with tonsils? It's a good question. And so funny story, I wrote an article on this and <laughs> completely forgot about it. 
<laughs> and when I was Googling around what are tonsils, magically mine popped up, and I was like, oh, look at that. I wrote uh, that. That's, that's I, hilarious to me that you were your own resource. You're like, oh, this guy's intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Um, well, so what it, did you teach yourself? Well, and that's the funny. So uh, tonsils, they, you know, it's an most likely an evolutionary uh, mechanism to control bacteria getting into your into your body. And what they are, most people think of tonsils as the palatine tonsils, which are the two in the back of your throat yeah. um, and on the sides. But actually, uh, they are a smaller section of a grouping of uh, four um, sets of tonsils that create sort of a ring. Four sets or four total? Four types of tonsils. Oh, So okay. palatine tonsils are in the sides and the back, your pharyngeal tonsils, also known as your adenoids. Then there's your gerlax, gerlach, G-E-R-L-A-C-H, gerlach uh, sure. tonsils, <laughs> um, which is uh, in the back of your nasopharynx where your nose goes to your mouth and, and by your inner ear. Um, and then your lingual tonsils, which are at the back of your oh, tongue. Golly. And so basically they form a ring and are the first barrier um, between the outside environment and your digestive system. And they're basically a, a lymphoid tissue, which performs lots of different functions for immune system. Mm -hmm. um, so in your bone marrow creates B cells, um, which are part of your immune system and they're immature. And once they can reach, eventually they reach your tonsils and they can uh, make what's called memory B cells. So if say a pneumonia bacterium gets into and touches them, the, your immune system will create a memory B cell for that. And, and so your tonsils will create that memory B cell so that the next time that pneumonia bacterium comes in there, right. it can fight that off without you you know, getting a systemic infection. So, it so basically, it's a it's the first line of defense your body has to control bacteria. So, and, oh, sorry, yeah. and that's what I kind of read uh, as I was doing some of my research. And I was actually really bummed and disappointed because I had my tonsils removed at, like my junior year. So you were older at the older end yeah. of the spectrum. So what, what was your parents' deal? I have no idea. I tried to call them to say, why did you, did you what, take out my, you took what out just my happened? Like, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of uh, sore throats that I can remember yeah. or any infections, but it was just, hey, it's Christmas break. You get to go do this. And like your doc was like, I need to do a boat. Yeah. <laughs> your tonsils look bad. Let's take that out. Well, and that's what I'm curious about because I did the same thing doing research. I was like, the tonsils are kind of badass. Like there's a lot of stuff here and I'm, kind of surprised why it's taken out so often and again I'm going to go back to my theory is it really poor hygiene that's causing you know this root evil problem and then parents are just like we'll take them out forget <laughs> yeah. the fact that they actually we serve a purpose at some point you know and then I wonder those of us that haven't had them out like I have a really good immune system maybe my tonsils just are killing it and <laughs> my mom and dad didn't have me take them out yeah. they were probably too cheap are you sick more often <laughs> No, no. Yeah. pretty healthy. I've never had a cavity, so I don't know. Well, and that's I don't why, know. <laughs> well, and this is why we they used to take them out all the time because it didn't make a difference whether they were there or not. Mm -hmm. All the studies said people weren't more apt to get infections whether they had them or not, even though this is what they do. So then, and why so, did they take them out? That doesn't make sense to me. Then, well, but because it didn't make a difference. Well, so between the ages of four and ten, you know, these these things are fighting in bacteria and infections so they themselves can also become infected and so kids are more prone to be getting strep throat is a pretty common thing when you're young yeah and so if you had you know a couple of uh you know tonsil infections a year they said well they don't really do anything for you so just take them out because the risk of surgery was taking them out was pretty low and the risk of them continuing to have these infections was there so they were like, eh, just take them out. doesn't matter. We'll stop these infections from happening, and now you don't get all these throat infections when you're young. However, yeah. that being said, um, they've come to find out that that doesn't really help anything because uh, a study done in 2002 said a kid who has their tonsils will get, over a two-year period, will get six tonsil infections. If you take them out, they'll get three tonsil infections, whether they have them or don't have them, it doesn't do any difference long term. So really all you're doing by taking out the tonsils is saving three infections over a two year period. So, it, and since we have antibiotics now, is that really a thing? Probably not. So let's just stop taking them out. So now you don't really get them taken out as often. So when did you have yours out? My junior year. Which would have been what? 16. Like year oh, 2000? Um, 98. 
Ah, uh, okay. So just before the study came out. Oh, 99. <laughs> 99. Yeah, yeah, so that was a 2002 study. But I think it's been known for a long time that these things, it's probably not a you know, going to do anything for you if we yeah. just leave them in. But at the same time, you got parents coming in a couple times a year. Take that out. My friend's got it taken out. And Is it kind of like the whole, like, ear infection? Like, a lot of docs won't even prescribe anything for ear infections anymore. Mm -hmm. Or pink eye. They are just like, just let it run its course, hot compress, do whatever. Is it kind of like, well, okay, this parent's annoying me enough. Just take them out and let's be done with this patient because the parent's in here every week. Well, and that's a big thing too, right? Uh, you know, bacterial resistance uh, to antibiotics is a huge thing. And so it, would it be better to take out the tonsils or give them antibiotics? Because you are then giving their chance for that bacteria in there to mutate so that later on those antibiotics might not work as well. So that's why they're probably stopping as easily di uh, giving people antibiotics. And now we're going into the antibiotic realm. Like yeah. this could get ugly. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's it's a it's a conversation you need to have with your doc what's going to be more beneficial the risk of a small risk of surgery which it's a pretty small risk yeah or the risk of you know mutating my bacteria in the future so the antibiotics don't work right. which is actually a huge thing now i mean there are there isn't very many uh antibiotics that don't have bacteria out there that have mutated to the point where they won't work right. almost all of them have mutated to the point where they won't work crazy that is that's not good that's not no. a good thing well, this is a problem and like honestly i think the number of times i've been given given antibiotics is like almost none like throughout my life i think we just weren't it just wasn't we didn't go to the doctor for hardly anything i don't think but then i think about how many times um they've been offered up to my kids so i wonder if it's just this like era where it was normal just throw antibiotics at it and now we're starting to remove ourselves from that maybe well and it was when it, well when antibiotics were first uh invented uh the Fleming was that who it was oh we should look this up um <laughs> almost for sure it's Fleming but don't uh quote me he even wrote in his thing uh so we have penicillin now um they c bacteria could mutate to the point where it's not going to work so we need to be careful but at the same time how do you not give them to somebody right and but what we found out now is we can't just give them to everybody all the time because they will mutate and then our back then the antibiotics aren't going to work in the future so it's this pendulum swing where we went over here and started throwing them to everything throwing them at everything and now it's come back to the point well maybe we shouldn't so if you go to your doctor and you're sick and he doesn't give you antibiotics don't get pissed right basically because he is trying to save future generations because there hasn't been a new class of antibiotics invented like in the last 20 years oh i didn't know that which is maddening. Yeah. But there just hasn't. And so eventually there will become bacteria that are resistant to everything and now you're screwed. And hopefully your immune system can fight it off. Mm. Oh, my husband has a, one of his good friends, dad's a doctor, and he says that he's convinced that the super bug is what's gonna wipe oh. us out. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's some validity to that. There is if we keep, mm -hmm. we keep letting bacteria mutate to the point because they I mean, they're pretty hardy, those bacteria. Yeah. Um, but, so, and then the, pro the other problem comes into, if you take a bunch of antibiotics, you do need some bacteria on your skin to help, help with uh, infections. You, most of your gut is filled with millions of types of bacteria that help you digest your food. So yeah. you don't want to take too much. So maybe April's the lucky one. You still have your tonsils, Scott. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, so maybe you're the lucky one, April. Less maybe. antibiotics. <laughs> so how do they take the tonsils out? Well, there's, I mean, you, there's a few different ways. I mean, they, you just surgically remove them. Well, you can use lasers, you can use scalp. I mean, back in the day, they were, they were taking tonsils. The Hindus were taking out tonsils in 1000 BC. I just can't even using, imagine what yeah. that was like. <laughs> Pre. Yeah, like just who was the first one that volunteered? Like, yeah, just go do what you gotta just do. Just take it out. <laughs> that hurts. And how did they how know? It been so painful. Yeah. Yeah, we well, didn't have pain meds mm -hmm. back then. What here? Have some whiskey? I guess back then it was wine or yeah. Who knows? What you had them out. So what did? It, do you remember what it was like? Because I remember wisdom teeth and stuff like that. Was it painful or? All I remember is that they put me to sleep listening to Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> like, and I remember <laughs> chuckling as I realized what song was playing, and then I was out, like totally. Yeah. So and, and then I don't remember. Junior. Uh, Sixteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Wow. Okay, well, that's pretty old. And so it wasn't getting... memorable. Yeah, I was always, yeah, I've always heard it's kind of like the wisdom teeth, like the later or the older you are, the mm -hmm. worse the procedure is like to recover from. Is that 
Probably yeah, true. Correct. Yeah. And and so they don't. I mean, and generally, if you're going to meet the criteria to have them taken out, it's between that four to ten range. Not as you get older. Kind of which doctor did your parents take? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I just maybe I was super sick and I just blocked it all out. But no, I think I was. I mean, I've never. I've been a pretty healthy person my whole life. So yeah. I don't know why they're out. <laughs> I did try and call my mom, like, hey. You need to call her out on this what one. What the I heck? Think. Yeah. Oh. I probably, one of my friends probably got it done. I was like, I need my tonsils out. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably oh. how it happened. <laughs> so, are there people then that are more predisposed to these tonsil stones and to tonsil problems? Well, there are some risk factors, and they're all pretty common sense. They are, you know, they're just debris, food debris, they're bacteria. So, if you. Uh, have good oral hygiene, brush your teeth, floss your teeth. Um, if you control your post-nasal drift, because a lot of it's just mucus, if you, you know, basically oral hygiene is a thing. And if you actually can cut down on milk and dairy products, mm. um, that helps as well. So what if you're an individual like myself and I eat all the time, all day long? Brush your teeth a lot. Uh, the brush average American eats 50 tons of food and drinks 11 thousand gallons of liquid in their lifetime oh lifetime yeah, yeah, yeah. i thought you meant a year, <laughs> a like, year. probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a lot of disgustingness that's likely to happen from all of that well yeah that's a lot of food chew your food i guess <laughs> goodness eleven thousand gallons of water <laughs> or fluids. fluids fluids liquids fluids liquids how many tons of food 50 50 <sighs> tons wow that's a lot of food a thousand pounds wow so that's on average. I'm sure your number is higher. <laughs> yeah. You're at the high end. High end of it. But I don't think I've ever had tonsil stones. No. So um, you talked about the kind of the pits or whatever. Crips, the crypts. Yeah. So are there people that anatomically are just, do they have more of those? Or is that from previous infection and scar tissue? No. Well, the tonsils themselves have these crypts just naturally. Okay. So like anybody, you can probably some are have more density of them than others some are probably deeper than others um, one of the ways to control the and they're also called tonsilloliths I think is the the uh, medical name for them to control them uh, you can actually take a laser and smooth off all the the crypts so and uh, smooth it out so that you don't have them and then you don't get them anymore yeah because a lot of people go in for like body resurfacing and stuff like that you know tone out but then there's people that actually want their tonsils smooth them out for me make them look better <laughs> I just want that first guy who invented the laser like in the late 50s if he knew all the cool stuff we can do with lasers it's so exciting yeah yeah. So um, some people might have more cavernous tonsils to begin with, so they mm -hmm. might be more likely to catch. So I've always heard that, and I think, you know, I practice this with my own kids, it's always good to look at somebody's airway anatomy when they're healthy, so then you know what's normal. So yes. you might know that, you're, hey, your kid's got pretty nasty-looking tonsils from the get-go. <laughs> He's going to be really, really good at tonsil hockey? There you go. Yeah, I guess. I hate to think it's of that. Bad joke. It was a patch. <laughs> Poorly planted joke, Scott. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> my point is is that maybe you notice like if you have one kid that gets infections and stuff all the time, don't just look at their, you know, their throat and their tonsils when they're sick. sick. Look at it when it's healthy and does it, you know, is it different than the child that is healthy? Maybe they have more I suppose you could, but at the end of the day, what would you do about it anyway? Nothing. Other it's just, than say, like, it's just, brush your teeth and well, floss like, your my son's teeth a, like you normally do? He's a bit of a hypochondriac anyway, and so if his sister's <laughs> got a cold, he's got a cold too. So, But if you've never looked at it before, I may be like, oh gosh, yeah, your tonsils look really bad, but maybe that's normal for him. Yeah. I don't know. Just yeah. a thought. Well, sure, yeah. It's always good to know your own body so you know what's wrong with it. Yeah. Or your kids. Or your <laughs> Finding kids. Finding out what they're doing. Yeah. So we've talked about what uh, you know, these stones are, mm -hmm. what tonsils are, maybe some of the contributing factors to people getting them. We talked mm -hmm. about we can remove tonsils. What are some of the things, I guess, that people can do that are non-surgical or non... You said eliminate dairy. Are there other things that you can do to get rid of these tonsil stones? Let's say you've got someone in your life that's got chronic halitosis. Mm -hmm. What can we encourage them yeah. to do Yeah. to maybe get what rid of these? What have you told these? Parker to do? <laughs> I, you know... He did uh, rinse with salt water, and that is one of the recommended things. Like gargling? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Um, I didn't have him try. I did read that uh, people can drink lemon juice. Uh, I, I don't know why. But it's isn't just one lemon of the juice acidic? Yes. And isn't the problem with these that you're more acidic to start? 
Um, Don't they farm or? Having a uh, lower pH in your mouth is a risk factor for it because a lot of the bacteria that gets trapped are your uh, bacteria that are more acidic. Yeah. So it's interesting that the lemon juice, but that does make sense too because more acidic is relative, right? Like oh, all bacteria, they need, uh, you know, pH is above like 4.5 to uh, propagate. But some of these bacteria, they're in the five pH range of five. Um, so maybe certain types of lemon juice are have a lower pH than that. I don't know what the pH of lemon juice is, but yeah. that would make sense if it's super low that it would kill off the bacteria and then you would no longer have the bacteria to get <laughs> caught in there. Yeah. So. so what is the, I guess the question would be if the pH of the lemon juice is low enough, that would make sense. So gargling, like, yeah. salt water, lemon yeah. juice. Water picks, swabs. And I think, I'm a big pusher of the water pick. I think it's a really good, like, I don't think it replaces flossing, but I think it helps with all those little, you know, crevices in between your teeth and stuff. So it makes sense. It just seems funny to be in there, like, you go in between your teeth. It just seems funny to aim it back at your tonsils and try to, like, a video game, knock out the stones. I would be nervous to actually find a stone. Yeah. And be like, Ugh, I don't well, and know. Well, I'm wondering you know? how many times have people had them and not real? Do you just swallow them and not even know mm -hmm. you had them? Maybe more people have them than we think, and you just don't ever know. Mm -hmm. Well, and I can't remember the specific percentage, but I want to say it's in that 20% range of people who actually get them to begin with. So it's not like it's oh. the majority of so people anyway. So it's not anyway. that common. No, it's a lower percentage of people. And I don't quote me on the number, but it is in that 20% range. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking maybe it was more common than that, and that we just didn't realize it. And maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah, because um, how many people actually report that? I yeah. don't know. Is that something that people tell their dentist or their doctor? Parker was pretty freaked out about it. Yeah. Like, he brought him up often. He's like, oh, I got one of those stinky things again. And, you know, we'd examine it. And yeah. Like, Ew. <laughs> Just, and that's about it. We talked to our dentist, and our dentist really didn't give us anything, any real advice on, like, oh, you should do this or that. He's like, oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. Your family has, like, a bad history of picking <laughs> health care <laughs> providers. <laughs> well, and he's not wrong, We right? have a great one now. Okay. When your dentist isn't wrong, he's like, yeah, don't worry about it because yeah. you shouldn't worry about them. They don't do anything. I mean, it's not like it's going to cause anything other than maybe you had something in the back of your throat, but they're not harmful to you. Yeah, and if yeah. you ingest it, nothing happens. It's just a calcified No, it just makes you have bad breath. Yeah, I just think if, I, if one popped out, I would notice it and not... I don't know. I'd be concerned. I would just bring it up. I wouldn't just swallow something foreign that just popped into well, my mouth. And then, like, if you think about, so coughing is a good way to force these out. Mm -hmm. So people that are coughing are typically sick anyway. They're probably already producing more mucus than normal. How many times are oh. they expelled into a tissue or something like that and never even Noticed. recognized? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. most of them are super tiny and or you're coughing up goo. You're yeah. probably not examining your goo. At least I don't. No. When I blow my nose, I'm not staring at it. Yeah. I mean, you can watch them on YouTube. The you told me you watched like that. Popping their own, like putting a little instrument or a Q-tip back there, and it pops out. Oh. <laughs> Did anybody else have a parent who would blow their nose into a hanky? Look at it. <laughs> who will like? Fold it up and keep the hanky in the back pocket did. for later. Yeah. My dad did that all the time. How gross is but that? But I don't think, like, I think they didn't have tissue boxes everywhere. Like, I don't think my grand, like, my grandpa always had a little hanky and stuff, and I think that was just what you did. Well, yeah. the, I actually, when I was younger, remember thinking, okay, I need to get a hanky when I'm older to blow my nose. And then when I got <laughs> older, I was like, that's the grossest thing I've ever heard. You're saving your snot for it. And then when you break it out, it's all crusty. And well, and I just don't think that it's something I use several times a day. It always makes me wonder, like, why did he have to blow his nose 12 times a yeah. day throughout his entire life? What was going on there, Grandpa? Uh, <laughs> my great-grandpa did. I remember uh, that. Oh, I don't know. Gosh. I just remember that was one of the grosser things. When I became an adult and realized what my uh. dad had did when I was younger, yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Gross, Dad. Jeez. Or maybe it was a good thing. Maybe he was never sick because he always got that bacteria reintroduced. And I don't actually remember him being sick, but yeah. I don't know if he would have told me if and he Now we're all on that. antibiotics and we can't fight anything off. No. So maybe your dad, just like his honey th thing, was right all along. Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't make my dad right. <laughs> maybe he was. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Well, I guess that's what tonsil Tonsil Tonsilloliths is what they are. Are <laughs> non-harmful, not common, but... Stinky. Gross and globs gross. of nonsense that we cough up. And just to have, if young kids, it would be fun if you coughed one up and then, like, 
tonsil stone fights? Oh, Wouldn't that be gross? gross? Yeah, it would oh. be gross. They stink really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be funny and gross all at the same time. <laughs> I don't yeah. think it would be no. funny. No. It's a guy thing. It though. might be funny if I wasn't the victim. <laughs> That's, yeah, maybe. Mm, I can't even think of a normal way that that would be introduced. That's, yeah. yeah. Or the quantity that you would need to make that yeah. happen. One is enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All well, right. good. Well, if you liked what you heard or saw today, check us out on YouTube or our podcast. Or visit our website, medicalconfessions.com.